Welcome everyone to the Chompcast, the official podcast of Sword Chomp. My name is Morgan Barnes. I'll be your host today from Montana. Uh, joining me is the crew, my friends and fellow co-hosts. Uh, some quick introductions. From North Carolina, we got Joshua Fowler. Hello. From Japan, we have Mr. Shay Layton. And that's the way the news goes. And from Texas, we got Mr. Anthony Fisher. Let me at him. Let me at him. <laughs> Le- yeah, who? who? Who are you trying to get? Trying to get you. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I'm on your team, I swear. No, as usual, we got we got an awesome show today. Um, a lot of fun topics that we dug out this week. Uh, just kind of a quick run through here. Uh, games we would love to see get kickstarted, or video game series we'd love to see get kickstarted, inspired by recently released Ukulele, a very successful Kickstarter. Um, franchises we would love to see just either die out or get reimagined. That topic is inspired by the new Call of Duty announcement trailer going back to World War II. And uh, and we say that with Jess. We don't actually wish ill will on any of these franchises. Like, they need to die. It's all in good fun. Um, and, uh, of course, we wanted to round out something silly. Our personal favorite big dumb summer movies uh no smart summer movies like inception are allowed to be snuck in there you hear that shay no inception oh fine that was such a good movie though <laughs> it's crazy to think that was actually a summer movie too you know um dude is it, it was such a good movie i remember really quick when i came out of the movie theater when it was done it was raining and the sky was like actually red it was weird. I'd never seen the sky like that, and there was a double rainbow. And it was just like <laughs> epic when I came out of. But did the you movie really? Theater. Yeah, or did was you I still really in come out of yeah. the movie theater, Shay? Dun dun dun. Have you ever left the movie theater, Shay? That's where I've been the past seven years of my life. <laughs> in that that's same fucking, movie theater. That, that fucked that, up movie theater. That top is still spinning. <laughs> <laughs> it never stopped. <laughs> that top is still spinning. Um, but yeah, no, we're gonna and and the reason why we're gonna do that topic for our listeners is just to kind of see what sort of uh, movies make us tick in sort of the dumb fun way, inspired by the new Fast and the Furious movie, just crushing it at the box office. And of course, we got some video games to talk about too, being a video game podcast, uh, ukulele among other things. Um, so it should be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I asked you guys for some other games. I didn't really get a, it. was kind of a blur before we started this podcast. So I don't know if you guys had any other games you wanted to mention in the show, but oh well, <laughs> you have to you have to surprise <laughs> me. So I didn't. <laughs> which uh, which you guys normally do, but um, surprise, woo, yeah, fuck it, yeah, dude. You, well, I'll talk about this after the podcast. But so much weird shit went down in the last hour, and all I can think about is man. We're usually recording by then. <laughs> if only we had started recording the podcast ahead of time. Uh, mm. All went downhill, Josh. Um, but, so the first topic I want to talk about to you guys today, this is going to be a fun one that I want to pick you guys' brains with, okay? So, you guys all know kind of the story behind Ukulele. It, w- it was in our most anticipated games of the year show. And the story behind Ukulele is interesting because it was just released a couple weeks ago in April. And it was basically like a super group from X Rare, um, the Rare Revival, as they were calling it. And a lot of these people that came from making a lot of these sort of franchises that had died out, like Banjo Kazooie, and a lot of people are involved in like Donkey Kong Country and the Donkey Kong Country series. These um, a lot of these amazing people, and I can list them off later. I got I got the picture if we need to. Basically, got together and said, "Look, a lot of people are clamoring for like a Banjo Kazooie esque Nintendo sixty four style platformer from Rare. People love us; they miss us. Let's get a Kickstarter. Get a lot of these people who made these games that people loved, and uh, let's see if people would fund it. Sure enough, it got funded. Made over two million dollars, uh, fifteen thousand plus backers, and boom." A wonderful Kickstarter story was born, and we're going to talk about ukulele later, but it did get me thinking, like, you guys have been playing games your whole life, and, like, where we are at now with crowdfunding, like, if you could make any sort of dream game come into fruition from any developer or any person, 
with this new crowdfunded Kickstarter model, what would it be? Because I think that's a really fun discussion to have. Um, and when I brought that up, Josh, where did you f- first start going with it? I mean, how, what would you do? Actually, mine, <clears throat> mine led me down an interesting road this week thinking about this question, which uh-huh. actually it's it's been it's been fun. It's been fun. Um, because one of my, <laughs> one of my favorite series from the Game Boy Advance back years ago were the mm-hmm. Golden Sun games, mm. which, which were supposed to be a trilogy on Game Boy Advance. And then they made the first two and then that was it. Um, mm. and I always wanted to see where it ended. And so I went to look it up and come to find out they made a third one on the <laughs> DS that I didn't know about because no one, no one else gave know. a shit about that series. So I never heard about it. Um, I, I kind of remember that DS one, but go ahead, Josh. Yeah, but anyway, be, because of this, you know, search to find out if they'd ever finished the, the trilogy, I found out that they actually did. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I ended up finding a copy and I'm going to go back through that game now and find out how the series actually ends. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh. it's it's been a good week. <laughs> That's hilarious. Was it, it was actually in America too? It wasn't like a Japanese or an overseas thing or something? No, like there's actually actually a U.S. version of it, but yeah, okay. no, like I said, nobody cared because it wasn't a big series. But I I really enjoyed the first two, and yeah, always. I vaguely they... remember hearing about that, but I just think that maybe it was so low key that we just glossed over it. Yeah, I mean, it probably wasn't the best game ever, but it was it was good. It was kind of a uh, I'm trying to think how to even explain it. It was like a uh, RPG sort of a game with uh, lots more puzzle aspects in it than most. Um, well, it was very traditional. I I remember, like, yeah. I remember, like, if if Shay and Fish had never played it, or someone listening has never played the Golden Sun games in the Game Boy Advance, the reason they were so um, sort of beloved by Game Boy Advance owners is because visually they were insane. Like, I remember at the time. Um, when you got me into it, Josh, I was like, yeah, this is kind of a standard RPG, you know, turn-based kind of thing, whatever. But, like, for the Game Boy Advance, you were just like, wow, like, how did they pull off those visuals? Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. And it, it's kind of a slow burn story, but once you get into it, it's it's fun. I'm, <sighs> really, I should go back and play the first two before uh, mm-hmm. before that new one gets here, because it's been over a decade at this point, and, yeah, I'm I'm not going to know what's happening. If, if I go right into the third one again. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's, yeah, I don't fucking remember. That's, that's a good one, Josh. I hadn't, you know, I guess in a way you don't, you get to kind of slide out of that question because someone already made it. So. Yeah, someone made it. I was, I, I really would have liked to see someone make it and it turns out they did. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that's really cool. That's really cool. Golden Sun. I take it Shea Fish, no, no familiarity with Golden Sun? Nope. Um, as far as I know, was it that game that like you had to like be playing in the light? No, no, it? that was Boktai. The sun is in your hand. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that was sorry. actually a Hideo Kojima game. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> of course, it was. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I want to try to get gamers outside. You know what? No, it sucked about that game. It was actually pretty cool, but like getting outside to play, it was a pain in the ass. You know, like. <laughs> Like there was, you couldn't trick the system with a lamp or anything, if I remember right. So like, if I was playing it at night and I was really into it, I was just fucked, you know. Uh-huh. Hmm. Cute idea though. No, no, that yeah, that was Boktai. Weird era, weird era. Um, it was basically like a knockoff of Final Fantasy, but just really gorgeous and like Josh said, a little more puzzle oriented. Um, yeah, so, yeah. You should, should Google it. Golden Sun. You and our listeners, if you guys have never heard of, heard about it. Um, what about you, Fish? Uh, you know, I, I started thinking about it, and the first game that came to my mind was Mega Man, and then I thought about it, and I was like, oh, wait, they already <laughs> did that. <Aww. laughs> and then you get depressed. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't hear anything good out of that game that uh, came out oh, of that. Mighty Number no. 9 disaster. Yeah. You, you had the opposite problem I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but maybe they could have another shot at it. I don't know. Um, then I started going down. I was like, what other game do I really love that I would like to see kickstarted? And I was thinking, like, Pokemon? And I, for some reason, I was like, no, Pokemon's still in a good place. It's just I wish they, they would kind of change it up a little bit. Even 
even though you know they they did this this Pokemon Sun and Moon, uh, they mm-hmm. changed up how the gyms go. It's a little different, but um, then right. I was just like, I gotta look for. I I was looking for something that was just old that I really liked, but was you know just had dated graphics, but had like the core gameplay was just addictively fun and Mm -hmm. i came to um vagrant story Mm, interesting yeah Uh, i'd like a good one yeah i'd like them to like take another stab at like a more nuanced type of story uh, because that story was uh pretty crazy back then um and a little hard to follow at times especially if you yeah it it had a huge cast of characters in there that were Mm -hmm. it was hard to keep track of yeah. At the time when, uh, yeah, like there was no voice acting or anything to really keep, you know, characters separated that you, you wouldn't see for hours at a time. So. <laughs> yeah, but I will say it does hold up, Fish. Like I played it when we first started the podcast. I did a video for our Sword Chomp YouTube that we ended up taking down because, you know, we first started the YouTube. We were just had all these grand ambitions for making all these like sort of let's play videos. And then it just became impossible. But um the story as an adult like i played that as a kid and i was like 18 17 whatever but like playing it again as a 30 year old adult like the maturity of the story and the darkness of it all like really affected me i was like i if i had the time i would love to play this now as an adult yeah um Mm -hmm. yeah um that and the gameplay too the gameplay is uh pretty intense especially once you get into higher levels and um you, you start to once you start to get that combat system down, it's very satisfying to go through. It's almost like, I want to say it's it's almost like uh, Fallout's bat system. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is yeah for for its time, like I've never seen anything like that. And um, yeah, I just I would think like Parasite to... Eve kind of started that system because I remember vaguely. I don't know if any of you guys have played Parasite Eve, but I think it had sort of a similar thing where you'd pull out like a grid and then you could like freeze time and like attack somebody's head or arm or leg or whatever. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah. But that <laughs> but yeah, just for listeners who might not be familiar with it, um, real quickly fish and I'll let you continue. It was, uh, the big deal with that game when it came out was it got a 40 out of 40 from Famitsu. Uh, and it was directed by, uh, Matsuno who became very famous of course for final fantasy 12. Um, but there's not very many games like Vagrant Story. If you're listening and you don't know anything about it, you should go Google it. But anyways, go ahead, Fish. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'd just like to see, I guess, Vagrant Story taken to the next level as far as the like, graphics and um, maybe them sprucing up that 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 gameplay. And yeah, I'd just like to see a team if they could assemble like the original team and ask them like, hey, would mm-hmm. you guys like to pursue this uh, franchise and you guys would be actually be backed by Kickstarter and they were all for it. Like I would be one of those backers for it. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to see what, a, what, even if it's not a reboot or something like that, I'd just love to see that team do something like that again. That mm-hmm. was, it's, that's, that's one of my favorite games um, from that generation. It's really, really good. And I think it's often underappreciated too, because I talk to a lot of RPG fans all the time that even in PS1 era, people that, have never heard of Vagrant Story or like vaguely in passing. And I'm just like, oh, trust yeah. me. Like if you get a chance, you need to find this game and just try it out because it's like, it's very adult and it's it's serious and dark. So if that's not your cup of tea, then, you know, it probably wouldn't be for you. But just the characters, the music is fucking amazing. And then the gameplay, it just tons of depth to it. And it's it's a hard game though. You'd be warned. That game will fucking, the last boss in that game, as Josh mm-hmm. and me can attest to, legendarily just, fuck you gamer we don't want you to finish this game kind of a last boss yeah i could i kind of yeah i think i was stuck on this first uh, form (laughs) that last boss um actually requires you to use all the mechanics like there are the the game the combat in that game is really ridiculously deep and you can get by through most of the game without really grasping the whole thing until Mm -hmm. you get to that last boss and 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 then you hit that and it's yeah it it wants yeah. you to know exactly how the combat works to take that boss down <laughs> yeah it's almost like if the omega or ruby weapon in final fantasy 7 was like the last boss it's just like